Hi friends. Uh, hello. Hi. How are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello. So doing like e-girl hair. I don't know guys. I just feel like I never do anything fun with my hair because I just don't like it. So I was like, so I was like, why don't I try doing something fun and different? So this is what I'm doing with my hair today. I've got the little boop boop. Anyway, um, hi, how are you? So first of all, by the way, I want to thank my candle of the day. My friend Amber gave me this. It's called Palm Springs. It's a soy wax candle. It smells like cactus flower and coconut. It smells amazing. She gave it to me for my birthday and she is the sweetest little angel of all time. She's also my maid of honor. So I love you, Amber. Thank you. Today I want to talk about celebrity makeup brands. I feel as though celebrity makeup brands are like so interesting and I think it's because we're kind of seeing them evolve more and more and more as the makeup industry gets more and more popular and I think you have some that are like super super good amazing doing great and then you have others that are so bad and I would love to talk about it and I would also love to get your guys's opinion on these makeup brands and I'd also like to talk about the underlying idea of our celebrities creating these makeup brands because they actually have a passion for makeup or they think they can produce something innovative or are they doing it because they're gonna make a lot of money <laughs> off their already existing fan base I also am gonna shy away uh, somewhat from influencer brands because I think that's kind of a whole different category. Although I do think the premise is very similar. Uh, it's a little bit almost, I don't want to say easier, but it is easier to uh, create a makeup brand when you have a pre-existing fan base that you know will support that brand. Whereas if you're just starting out from scratch with no one knowing who you are, it can be a lot harder. So I'm going to touch on influencer brands maybe a little bit just in the sense that it's obviously a similar idea. But I feel like with celebrities, it's almost like 10 times more intense than it would be with an influencer that makes sense. The first influencer brand I really want to talk about is Kat Von D Beauty, which no longer exists. Uh, Kat Von D is out and it is now Kendo Vegan Beauty with Kindness Kendo Vegan. Um, and I'm sorry, Discovery? I don't know. I'm, I'm not here to like crap talk the brand, but I will say Kat Von D is one of the first people that I remember who was a celebrity, and I could be wrong, there could have been other people, but she's one of the first people I really remember who had a makeup line who was a celebrity. Who was a celebrity before she started the makeup line. Kat Von D was on Miami Inc. I think she she did a couple of other things with reality TV and she was a very famous tattoo artist before she started her brand. I think Kat Von D, as much as I didn't support the brand because of all the scandals that happened, I think Kat Von D is a very good example of a good influencer brand. Um, and we're kind of going to pretend like if, if all the scandals hadn't have happened and also before they all happened, she was a really good example of a very good influencer brand. So Kat Von D, when she came out, her brand was very much her aesthetic. It was very kind of gothic. It had a lot of like really beautiful artwork to it. She was actually the one creating the artwork for a lot of the things that were coming out. Um, the Saint and Sinner palette, the Mi Vita Loca, her tattoo foundation was really, really popular. She did a ton of things with her brand and it had had a very cohesive vibe to it and that vibe very much matched who Kat Von D was as a person and who her fans knew her as. And that's why I think she was so successful because not only were the formulas for a lot of her products, especially for the time, really, really good. Not only was there that aspect to it, and I think her ideas were pretty innovative. She was coming up with things that made sense to consumers, but all of them followed this same sort of aesthetic that was Kat Von D. And I think that was why she was so popular for so long was because her aesthetic and her formulas were consistent and they were consistently true to her personality. And honestly, I think a big part of that wasn't even her. I think it was Kendo, which was the parent company behind her because the, her, she started out with a brand who knew what they were doing. It wasn't like her own team or anything. It was a Sephora brand who owned a bunch of other brands and knew exactly how to do this. I will say I think Kendo was very smart and innovative in the sense that they saw their brand like Too Faced and having these like aesthetic that were really working for them. Like Too Faced had this like kind of cutesy whatever aesthetic. They saw that and thought they could do almost the polar opposite of that. That's why I think later down the line we had the Too Faced and Kat Von D collaboration of the Better Together because I think they pulled, weirdly a lot in my opinion, I think Kat Von D pulled a lot of inspiration from Too Faced in how to have a theme that aesthetically fit over the entire brand and I think that's really interesting. So Kat Von D would be an example of a good influencer brand, however she's also a very good example of how public opinion of the influencer in charge of the brand can drastically change how the brand is viewed. I mean she, all it took was that one comment for the floodgates to kind of open open about being anti-vax, for the floodgates to open, find out all of these things about other things about her, and then she became almost like, you know, nobody wanted to be associated with the brand. Nobody wanted to buy Kat Von D. Influencers wouldn't promote it on their channel. Nobody was talking about Kat Von D anymore. So I also think while she is a prime example of how to make a brand, 
aesthetically how the influencer is i also think she's a prime example of maybe not wanting to make your brand entirely based on who you are as a person because it ended up being detrimental to her and her brand the next person i want to talk about is kylie kylie jenner uh kylie cosmetics i don't want to really talk about kkw beauty by kim kardashian um because i think we all kind of know <laughs> where that came from i think kylie was kind of the catalyst for kardashians oh wow that was a lot of sounds Kylie was kind of a catalyst for the Kardashians to start creating makeup and Kylie cosmetics I think falls in a very interesting middle ground I think we're gonna talk a lot about like really really good makeup brands but I think Kylie is in the middle she is smart because and her team is smart because they saw that people had this obsession with her lips back in like 20 I believe she started her brand in 2015 2015 2016 I bought my first lip kit in 2016 so people had this obsession with Kylie and her lips and the lip how big her lips were how she was getting lip injections it was like this whole thing right and so she capitalized on that she was like well if you're gonna talk about my lips so much i'm gonna make my own lipstick that you can wear to make your lips look like my lips because everybody's so obsessed with them people were doing like the kylie jenner lip challenge where they would potentially hurt themselves by making their lips really big it was like a huge huge thing back in the day so she was smart in the sense that making the lip kits again was very on brand for her where i think kylie cosmetics is going wrong and why i think it's kind of, i mean it's not a secret she just recently sold 50% of her company I believe 51% so she's not this, the sole owner anymore which I think it was a smart to sell it when she did because I think it's going to continue to decline because the reason Kylie's brand was so hyped in the beginning why it was so hard to get why people were freaking out over it was because people loved Kylie and they loved her so they wanted to support her she's a true and true influencer people were influenced by her to buy her products which is fine on the flip side of that that type of hype and almost hysteria that was caused by her initial launches could not be repeated over and over and over and over again. There was no way hype would continue. Even if Kylie herself got more popular, the brand cannot be sustainable just based on hype alone. There had to be quality to the product. There had to be good customer service. There had to be interesting and innovative products coming out. And while she does have a wide range of products and she's branching off into the skincare and she's doing all of these things, while we do have that from her, which I think is good, and she definitely has a lot of options for products like she comes out with a lot of stuff I think the quality is necessarily there and I think Kylie has never been able to find a true theme besides like basic Instagram-esque makeup like that's kind of been the theme this whole time and sometimes I don't think that's enough I don't think buying for the sake of supporting your favorite person is enough I think for a long time people were collecting everything and then it was just like now we're getting to the point where it's the tides kind of turning from just buying things to collect it to now being a little bit more anti-consumerist so her products had to step up as the market was changing a little bit and I don't think she's done that successfully. Um, I think she still relies on her core fan base to be her main source of people buying these things but she puts out too much and too much kind of just like meh quality stuff for that to actually continue which I think is really interesting. So Kylie's one that I think is interesting. I think it's interesting that she sold a big portion of her company. It was probably the smartest move she could have made because I do think we're gonna see her brand specifically kind of be on the decline a little bit but I mean she made it huge it was a it's it is a billion dollar business she did a lot with it so she made her money you know what I mean like it worked I just think as far as longevity this isn't a brand that we're gonna see stick around for like the long haul I think this was kind of a brand who had its high peaks and now it's kind of pittering off does that make sense so next we have Fenty uh Fenty is another Kendo brand just like Kat Von D and Fenty is Rihanna's brand of everybody on the list that I have Fenty is the best in my opinion like I I personally am a Fenty stan I absolutely love Fenty products. Everything I try from them, I end up absolutely loving. It's very rare that I try a Fenty product and I'm like, ooh, I hate this. Like most everything I get from them, I really, really enjoy. I think Fenty is interesting because they didn't go the Kat Von D route of it being like Rihanna's aesthetic. And I think in a sense they did, but the, Rihanna's aesthetic is just like gorgeous. Like she's just like a gorgeous, super interesting, super funny, eccentric person. Like that's kind of her aesthetic. This like fashion forward stunning talented person i sound like such a rihanna stan but like, i kind of am but also like i really love the makeup i think fenty did a good job because their kind of niche that they carved out which i think you'll notice with kendo brands specifically they focus on a niche i think fenty's niche was being
being inclusive. And I think it came at a time where we needed that. We needed inclusivity in the makeup industry. And I think a lot of that probably was Rihanna's influence and Rihanna saying, I want to be inclusive for everybody. But I think Kendo was smart, again, in seeing trends, kind of like they did with Kat Von D, where they saw the trend of the, you know, having an aesthetic to a brand. And now they're seeing a trend of people want inclusive makeup. People want makeup that everybody, no matter what your skin tone is, can buy. So they saw that and they made what at the time was a crazy foundation line of 40 shades, which is nuts that that was like, I can't believe that happened like recently because <laughs> that was again in like 2016 that happened. I cannot believe that that was like so, it, it's crazy that like it took so little to get so much hype for that brand. All we wanted was like an inclusive, anyway, that's a different story, but I think Rihanna came, I mean, she came out with the trophy wife, which was that crazy, insane gold highlighter. She was doing things that were different and were catering to women with deeper skin tones, women with medium skin tones, just doing things that were different at the time. Now, it definitely is a little bit more common to see brands coming out with good shade ranges. We're seeing brands kind of follow these trends, but what does everybody say when a brand does that? They say, well, Fenty started that. Fenty is known as kind of the trailblazer in the makeup industry. So I think even when Fenty does come out with products that aren't as widely loved. Like for example, they came, their first eyeshadow palette, they came out with the Moroccan Spice. I know some people really like that palette, but I think overall, I didn't see too, too much hype for it on social media and the internet. And I went in store and swatched it and I wasn't like, oh my God, <laughs> I wasn't like losing my mind. Um, but even when they do have those more meh products, they have other products that are so good and amazing that it kind of makes up for it. They're coming out with different things all the time. They have the glosses that everybody loves. A lot of people, I feel like you kind of either love or hate the foundation, but a lot of people really like the foundation. I personally loved it. You have the bronzers now. Now they're focusing on cream products. So they have cream bronzers and cream blushes coming out, which again is very on trend. And I think that's kind of where Fenty falls for me is they're kind of a trendy brand. They know what trends are happening. They stay up to date on them, follow them pretty closely. And I think that's kind of where Fenty shines. They make very trendy on brand makeup. And I also think Rihanna, even though I'm pretty sure Fenty got its initial hype because of Rihanna, because she was kind of the person behind everything, like all the Rihanna stands wanted to support Rihanna. I think Fenty has done a really good job of making a name for itself in the beauty industry and not just, oh, people only buy this because they absolutely love Rihanna. Because I like her, but I'm not like a stan. But I like Fenty. I think the brand itself is really good. I have other friends who are like, oh, I'm not really a stan, but like I love their lip glosses. You know what I mean? All right, the next thing I want to talk about is house labs. Mm, so this is one I would call bad. Um, This is one that I would be like, Ugh. um, I think first of all there was a lot of issues just initially with the house labs launch and everything the promo sh shots they put out were kind of a mess the products they put out were not things that people were necessarily like looking for i think it's a similar mistake kim kardashian made when she came out with those contour sticks not a lot of people were super interested in contour sticks in that moment in time it, like wasn't really a popular thing that was coming out um and i feel the same way about lady gaga's brand she came out with these kind of weird products the promo shots were very avant-garde and didn't even closely show how like an average person would use the makeup. And I know that a lot of people who have bought from Lady Gaga's brand have really enjoyed the products. I know people that like love the eyeliners. I know people that love the lip stuff. Like I know people have enjoyed the products. I just never hear anybody talk about it. And I think it's because they did, you know how I, we talked about before how like with Kat Von D, they did a brand that was so her. It was recognizably her aesthetic. They didn't really do that with Lady Gaga. They, she didn't put like, it didn't feel like any of her was put into the makeup. And I think with influencer brands, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it. You have to put yourself into the makeup a little bit or nobody's gonna be super, super interested in it because they want you. The reason a lot of these products get support is because they want the per they want the aesthetic and the vibe of the person that they support. That's why they support them in the first place. It's a big reason. So I think with Lady Gaga's brand, people just didn't connect with it. Her like, I'm sure her super, like her monsters and her stands absolutely connected with it because they just love her. But people like me and who other people who are just like casual fans, just kind of like her, would have been interested in supporting her. Um, People like me, I saw that and I was like, that doesn't seem anything like Lady Gaga. Like that's literally nothing to do with her. And I think it's made it so there's not much hype around it. I don't see a ton of people after that first initial launch. I haven't really seen a ton of people reviewing her 
products. I haven't seen a lot of promo for her products. I know you can really only buy them on like Amazon, which is another little sketchy thing. Cause like I have a, I have a very, I should talk about Amazon and my relationship with Amazon. Cause it's really interesting, I think. Um, but that's a different video. But I will say, I think Gaga's brand needs a little bit of a tweak. I think they need to tweak it. They need to cater it to be more towards her fans, more towards her monsters, more about her and less about these like crazy looks. And I also feel like, and this is no shade because I know there is a space for kind of more avant-garde makeup that maybe the average consumer wouldn't wear. And if that's what they're marketing to, that's fine. But I think a lot of times the photos from the promo shoots of House Labs gets a little bit memed because they're so out of the box and so like different than you would normally see a person wearing makeup. And I think it would benefit them to show how the makeup could be worn by a person who doesn't want to have this like crazy swan black eye. You know what I mean? Like I think it would benefit them to show average consumers how they could use the product. Unless they just don't want average consumers to buy it, which is fine. That's a choice. I think it's making the brand not as popular though, for sure. Next I want to talk about Millie Bobby Brown. Um, Millie Bobby Brown is adorable. First of all, I love her on Stranger Things. I think she's a very cute kid. I'm not here to trash a teenager, okay? And also I think her brand is fine. I've tried a couple things from Florence by Mills, which I think is a very cute name. The thing about her brand and why I think it's doing so well is because her brand has a demographic and it's kids that are her age. She's not trying to sell you crazy, insanely pigmented eyeshadow palettes. She's not trying to sell you full coverage foundations. She's selling you skincare that would be great for teenagers. And also the under eye cream is bomb. I've been using it a lot. I really, really like it. And it's like $10. It's so cheap. Anyway, um, the eye cream's great. I use it. I really like it. But she's marketing things for kids her age. She's not trying to do anything that's like not her aesthetic. Again, she found her aesthetic and she sticks with it. The packaging is very simple. It's nothing out of this world, nothing crazy, but it's cute. And teens are going to really gravitate towards that. And the price point, this is where I, I did, they did this so right, because the price point is a price point for younger kids. They don't have these crazy expensive $45 creams that kids can't buy. Every single thing that they have put out has been reasonable and affordable affordable for a kid who has 20 bucks in their pocket and wants to support Millie Bobby Brown. And I think they did that so right. So even though the formulas are a bit basic and maybe you're not gonna be able to get like a crazy look from anything, they're good for the demographic that they're serving and they did everything right from packaging to price point to even the products they're coming out with. Florence by Mills is doing a fantastic job at catering to their fan base. The thing I do have to wonder is how this will grow and evolve as she grows and evolves into an older person. I, I'm gonna be interested to see how they evolve the brand with her, with her fan base, kind of how that goes. Because I think that's going to be the only challenge they'll face down the line is because she is so young, because she's a kid, basically, um, they're going to have to possibly change the brand as she changes. So I think that'll be interesting to see. I think we haven't really seen stuff like that before. So I am definitely interested in what she's able to do. I'm very interested. Final brand I want to talk about hasn't even released anything yet. So I'm not going to be too harsh because we don't know and we, you know, whatever. But Selena Gomez is kind coming out with a brand called Rare Beauty. We don't really know anything about it yet. Here's my thing though. We're seeing more and more people come out with makeup brands like Selena. I believe Hailey Bieber just mentioned that she's coming out with one. Pretty sure, I think JLo said she was coming out with one if I'm not mistaken. Um, There's a lot of celebrities coming out with makeup brands right now, which there's a lot of kind of things you have to think about. We do have a pretty oversaturated makeup market right now, um, but there's always room for more innovation, you know? I will say, I worry because it's not even that I worry I will say I think we have to just this is where we have to kind of be mindful consumers because these people are doing this the main reason I mean Selena Gomez no I like her a lot I really like her music I love her as a person like I think she's great she does not have a history of being like oh my god I love makeup she's not exactly the most passionate makeup lover you've ever seen you know she makeup is not her big sort of focus she does a lot of other things that is not that um and same thing with all of these other people that are coming out with makeup lines and so i think we do have to just be careful as consumers to say okay i love and support this person and i love their music or i love them as a person like i like this person however i'm not gonna just blindly buy whatever they put out just because i like them as a person i think we have to make
make sure that we're buying things that are still interesting to us because at the end of the day Hailey Bieber doesn't need more money <laughs> Selena Gomez doesn't need more money uh, these people don't need your hard-earned money to get by like they'll be fine without it and at the end of the day you have to bring something new into your life bring something new into your collection and either use it or not use it um, and I think people have to make those decisions for themselves I think they have to decide you know what they want and what they don't want as consumers um, and I think we have to kind of put our foot down and say no we are not just going to blindly support you because you are a person that I really like I think these celebrities have to be putting in thought and care into their brands and you know forming really good aesthetics and not just doing it to be cash grabby because that's where it kind of becomes a little bit problematic for me personally but we'll see we'll see how it goes let me know your picks and people I know I had on here Ashley Tisdale because I remember she had a makeup line and I did want to give her honorable mention I know she recently like closed it down but I heard her products were really good I feel like they didn't get enough hype as they deserved people have like raved about Ashley Tisdale's products to me before so snaps to you Ashley I know you didn't really make the list but like proud of you uh, for making at least a good product let me know down below what you think about my assessment of these brands if you disagree if you agree let me know kind of what other influencer brands you can think of off the top of your head that would be interesting to talk about I would love to know your guys' opinion on this topic because I think it's really interesting um and yeah let me know what you guys think. Uh, I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're here watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. That's right. You can click on that link. You can register to vote and you can be part of our democracy and then you can also get out there and vote. <laughs> please, uh, please go vote. Um, and <laughs> if you're not from the United States and the link does not apply to you, please make sure you're staying informed on what's going on. On, using your voice in a positive way if you can because the world absolutely does need more of that um i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next one bye